Hello and welcome to this very special presentation all about the future of content marketing. If we've not met, my name is Teresa Heath Waring and I help business owners all over the world better market themselves through social media and digital marketing. And I've been working in marketing for now over 16 years and social media and content marketing has really changed the way in which we do things. So I am so glad that you are joining me here today for this presentation. So today we are going to be looking at the future of content, the key strategies that you should focus on when you're doing your marketing for your business. So I've got a few key points that I want to talk over with you today and a few things that I think people should focus on when they're looking at their content marketing strategy. So point number one is all about knowing your customer. Now, listen, I get it. People get so fed up of me talking about this because I go on about it all the time. But honestly, it is so important that we know who we are dealing with and who our customer is. Now, often people know the demographics of their customer. They know if they're male or female, where they might live, what age they might be. But I want us to go deeper than that. I want you to really think about who your customer is. I want you to think about what are their values? What are their aspirations? And ultimately, what are their pain points? So what is the thing that you do or that you help with that they have a problem? So every business is someone has a problem, the businesses that they solve it. So what are those pain points they have? I also want you to think things like, what pages do they follow on social media? What content are they consuming? What do they watch on Netflix? What do they do over the weekend? The more you can really start to understand who that customer is, the more crucial that's going to become to the success of your content. Because you could be creating the most amazing content in the world, but if we create this content and it's completely the wrong audience or we're targeting the wrong people or we've got the wrong message, then it's absolutely pointless. So like I said, it's so important. Step number one that you know exactly who you are talking about. OK, step number two, you need to think, what do they care about? OK, so one thing that I see all the time is businesses putting together content that the business wants to share. So the content is, do you want to buy my stuff? We're really good at this. Look at what we do. And it's very much business centric. It's all about them. And what they're not doing is thinking about who the customer is and what does the customer want to see? And how is that content going to add value to that customer's life? Now, I want you to take a moment and think about the pages that you follow and you interact with regularly on social media. And why do you follow and interact with them? Is it because it educates you and it tells you something and therefore it's great to see? Is it that it entertains you and it's hilarious or it's kind of really interesting to watch and therefore you keep going back for that? What is the reason you're in consuming that content? So when we're thinking about the content we put together for our customers, we need to put together content that they care about. We need to show that we understand them and give them something that they want to see when you post. Now, I've got a great example for you on this one. So this is a company called the Dollar Shave Club. This is their Instagram feed. I've just taken a screenshot of it. Obviously, it was back in summer. And basically, they know their customers so very well, like crazy well. So they create content that is aimed at their customer. So ultimately, they do skincare products for males. They have a very male orientated, obviously, Instagram. Their customers are males. They know what their male customers are like, and therefore they create content for them. So for instance, like they do these home style haircuts because we were during lockdown or like how not to sweat the small stuff or a life hack for a personal massage. So they're, they're kind of using humor and knowledge and interest to keep people coming back to look at their Instagram feed while also sharing things like, you know, the, the actual products themselves and how skin affects alcohol, uh, sorry, how alcohol affects skin and varying different things. So like I said, it's really, really um, important that you understand who they are. And also just to note here, their content isn't always about selling. It's not always about saying, hey, buy my stuff. It's about other things, too. It's about interacting with their customers and also because they know their pain points and they know what they're going through. They're creating the correct content for them. 
Okay, the next one I want you to think about, so number three, is all about that share ability. Now, if we could like, if I could write a rule of what's made something absolutely shareable and go viral, I'd be a millionaire. However, I can't, it's not as easy as that. But I want you to think about the shareability of content when you put it together. Like, why would I share this? What is it doing for me? And inevitably what normally happens with content when it's shareable, it's creating some kind of emotion. So think about the last thing you shared on social media. It either made you laugh, made you sad, made you angry, made you feel motivated. So the shareability factor is like gold. When you're creating content, it's great to get a like, it's great to get a comment, but the gold of content creation is the share. So if you are getting retweets, if you are getting people sharing your stories or sharing your posts on their own feeds, if you are getting people sharing stuff on Facebook, then that is really the goal. So whatever you can do to create that shareability is so important. So like I said, it's not just about the sales. The chances of someone sharing your sales post, other than being a competition or a crazy amazing deal, is really, really slim. So I want you to just think about the rise of TikTok and Reels. So TikTok has had 800 million active users worldwide and has been the downloaded over 2 billion times in the App Store and Google Play. People are loving the short form video content. They are loving the fact of you can watch and be entertained. Like I said, it's very shareable content. They're loving the fact that it's short and it's snappy and it's entertaining. So think about the success of some of those things. Is there short form videos that you can create? Now, I am not a fan of the dancing around on TikTok. Now, absolutely great if that's your thing, brilliant. That is totally not my thing. I would look like a bit of a prize idiot. So that's not for me. But can I take some other video content and put that into short form? Can I create some other entertaining videos, some other ways in order to help that shareability and create that content? Okay, the next one, number four, is user-generated content. So user-generated content is amazing. It is such a good thing for companies to focus on. So user-generated content is when people who use your product or your service actually post about your product and service. So it's one of the best forms of content because A, you haven't got to create it, tick. That's one job that you don't have to do. Also, when you create content, you're going, look how great we are, look how funny we are, look how brilliant our products and services. When someone else creates content, they're saying, look how great these people are. And that's what's even better and stronger about it. So it's that modern day testimonial. It's that modern day recommendation of someone who'd go to a friend, oh, I use so-and-so, they're really good. So you really want to make sure that you're creating that content and that you're encouraging other people to create that content for you. And then when they do create that content, make sure you're sharing it. Make sure you are putting it out on your social media so that other people can see, look, they share our content and therefore they're more likely to do it. It's no good just expecting everyone to give you user generated content and then you never actually share it anywhere. So one thing I want you to think about is you need to encourage them to do it, okay? People are not going to do it off their own bat. They're not going to just do it because they're nice and they like it. Some people might, and that's wonderful, but if you really want to encourage it, you are going to have to encourage them to do it. Now, one way you can do is through really subtle ways. If you're a shop, you can have something on the wall that says tag us in a post on Instagram. If you're sending out product, you can ask people to um, you can put a little card in saying tag us in a picture. You can also do things like competitions. You can give them a reason why they should share it or why they should put a, a photo up on Instagram or Facebook or wherever it might be. So what you want to do is you want to say, listen, we're going to give away 50 pounds worth of our product at the end of every month. For, and if you tag us in a post, you'll go into that draw or do something more specific, perhaps using a hashtag and a competition using a hashtag. So like I said, you really want to include your customers in this and encourage them to do this as much as possible. Now, I have given you a great example of a Instagram account that is entirely user-generated content. So this is a tourism account for Shropshire, where I live, and every single post on here is user-generated content. 
it is not taken from uh, the actual tourism themselves because could you imagine if they had to go and take photos of all these spots not only would it cost them a fortune and an awful lot of time but they would never get the variety or the interest or the depth of some of these photos because what's lovely about the user generated content is they all have their own look and feel but still you can bring them together for some uniformity so it's a wonderful way to actually get content and then what we do on these accounts is they get tagged in and we say thank you for the fact that they took a picture okay so number five the last one is all about authenticity now gone are the days in marketing where it was all smoke and mirrors and it was all about you know showing only your best self we crave authenticity more than anything we really like to see the authentic self of people so for me whether you're a huge business whether you're a solopreneur authentic authenticity is so key to your content marketing it enables you to show your personality because you know what's so great i run an online academy for business owners for marketers for solopreneurs who come and learn from me about how to create amazing marketing and build their businesses and what's great is there's this saying called your vibe attracts your tribe. So I am so authentic in the way I present, in the way I do my podcast, in my live videos, that I attract people who really like my style and therefore they're very similar to me and I love working with them. Whereas if I wasn't authentic, then that would have a really difficult situation where I act one way out publicly and they come into the academy and then suddenly I'm a different type of person and they might think, that's not what we thought. I don't think I want to work with her because I don't understand, you know, why she's like this because she wasn't like this. The other thing about being authentic, the other thing that you can do is listen and respond. So what happens sometimes on social media is people just think it's like a tool to shout to the world. It's totally not. Part of your content strategy should be the fact that you're responding to pretty much everybody that interacts with you. Every time they interact with you, they're sharing with their audience about you. So we should be very grateful and very happy to respond and engage with them. You should be transparent. You should be as honest and as open as possible in terms of what you do and how you do things and you should relate to your audience so you should show your audience look I know who you are and I relate to you and I and I understand you so for this example I've decided to share my very own Instagram now firstly I love Instagram if you love Instagram too please come over to Teresa Heath wearing on Instagram and find me and give me a follow I would love to see you there but basically on my Instagram, I share a very authentic, don't get me wrong, it's very curated, it looks nice, but it's a very authentic view of my world and what happens. So some days I'm doing podcast interviews, some days I'm doing masterminds or used to when we could mix with people, um, or some days I'm just doing planning at my own desk and some days I need a glass of wine. So, you know, I'm trying to show them all aspects of me and my authenticity that I read, I enjoy wine, I have coffee to keep me going in the morning, I interview amazing people like Dean Graziosi on the podcast. So I use my Instagram as a way to be very authentic and relate to my audience because my audience is very similar to me in the sense that they are business owners, they're running their businesses, they are trying, working hard to be a success and therefore I show them what's possible for them. I show them that I get to speak on stages, that I get to interview amazing people, but I show them how I do that through things like the books I read, the planning I do. So this is why something like Instagram is so good for that sort of thing. So hopefully you've enjoyed these five tips that I've got for your content creation going forward and I've given you some ideas. If you enjoyed what you saw today, please do come and follow me over at TeresaHeathWearing.com. Put Teresa Heath Wearing into any of your favorite social media platforms and you will find me. And do check out the Marketing That Converts podcast where you can get weekly updates and strategies and tools and motivation about marketing for your own business. Thank you so very much for having me and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference.